Good evening and welcome to the Weekly Roundup. Another busy week as we catch up on all things Phoenix. And it's been a massive week as we've been doing quite a bit in the community. But we've also been playing quite a lot of cricket as well. Matt has delivered our briefing for the day and we're looking forward to the launch of the Phoenix Cup and our association with it. And the trophy, well, that's something to behold. And now Wills has been at it again for Hampshire. 26 not out with the bat and this cracking wicket. Best wishes and good luck to Henners. Break a leg. Off to Romeo and Juliet production near Petersfield. So he's played his last league game of the season. And his bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love as deep the more I give to thee. Now it's time for the match reports. evening started with the girls putting up a fantastic effort against Aldershot, the top team in the league, just losing by two wickets. Definitely worth pointing out a fantastic innings from Imogen, scoring 41 runs. Well played, everybody. Off to our midweek game on Wednesday against Purbright, and Purbright won the toss and decided to bat. There's their scorecard, 109 of 16.5 overs. Really good effort from the Phoenix, and let's have a look at our bowling. Just five bowlers used, and that's a brilliant effort. Everyone getting wickets. One for Sagar, two for Carl, two for Charles, two for Sandeep, and one for Taddy. Ryan called up with our skipper, Adam Jukes. I'm here with Ads. It's a midweek game against Purbright. How do you think it's going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. We bowled really well, really good in the field. Carl and Sagar taking four wickets in the um, in the first like four overs, I think. So really well. Carl took a really good catch. Bowled it well, really well, I have to say. And really good in the field and we were, uh, we were a bit slow to start off with but Sammy and uh, Matty are in there, Matty's stuck in there and chasing quite a low score so hopefully we'll get it and hopefully we get the win. Yeah, just tee off at the end. Yeah, exactly. We, we've got the batters to do it, we've got plenty of batters still so yeah, hopefully we get the win. Come on you Phoenix. Come on you Phoenix. Just as the skipper says, Matt and Sammy saw us through both retiring and then Adam and Charles knocked the runs off and a victory for Frimley Phoenix, 110 runs, 18.2 overs with just the loss of four wickets. And then we have Purbright, seven bowlers used, three at the top taking the wickets, Coombs, Ralph and Keeble. Confirmation, Frimley Phoenix winning by six wickets. No game for the twos this week, with Frimley fourths conceding, but as you can see, 30 points, and we'll see what difference that makes to the league later on. We're off to Blackheath for the ones game, and as you can see, a beautiful ground, and the weather's fantastic. You've won the toss. won the toss. Good Lord, what are you going to do? Uh, we're going to have a bowl today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a goal. No, a bit of green pitch. It seems to have a bit of uh, moisture in the in the pitch, so we're going to have a going to have a go. Yep. See what happens. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Lovely ground, lovely day. Can't wait. Go for it, mate. Thank you, mate. So an unbeaten 2024 first team take to the field, and it was Joe that started from one end, and then Cam from the other, and this guy made a very wise decision and went and got his helmet on. Joe was the first to strike with a catch behind from Alan, who juggled it a bit but managed to cling on. And with four wickets down, the attack continued with Sandy bringing the spin and then Harrison charging down the hill. On a hot afternoon, drinks were very welcome after 20 overs with the score on 43 for six. So it was then Andy who replaced Sandy coming up the hill and it wasn't long before Blackheath were dismissed in just over 33 overs. So at tea, many, many thanks to Black Geek for the tea, scones and the hospitality. But here's their batting card. Well done to Black Geek, who battled hard up against a very, very strong Phoenix bowling attack. And there they are, all out for 60 of 34.5 overs. Five bowlers used for the Phoenix, three wickets for Joe, two for Cam, two for Harrison, one for Sandy and one for Andy. Sam and Sammy to open the batting and they got off to a very solid start. With only 61 to chase down, they were certainly getting on with it. We lost Sammy when the score was 31 and Sam was joined by Alastair, who like himself scored a half century last week. And it was Alastair who hit the winning runs for a very comprehensive win for Friendly Phoenix first team and continues the season's unbeaten run. Phoenix batting, well, some great power hitting from Sam there. Supported by Alistair and we get over the line in just over eight overs. Blackheath bowling, just three bowlers used with Nash getting the wicket. 
So there you have it. Friendly Phoenix ones win by nine wickets. So Al, what do you reckon about that? That was pretty comprehensive, wasn't that's it? Probably our, that's our best performance of the year. We bowled absolutely fantastically and batting was just awesome. Sam, uh, Sam taking us there again and Alistair once again just hitting it out the middle as soon as he comes out, which is brilliant. So roll on to the next week. Can't wait. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks, Thank Al. You, Cheers. So top wicket taker again today. How did it feel today? You seemed pretty quick. Yeah, it was good um, coming down the hill. So when Alan let me choose choose my end, I, uh, I unfortunately put Cam uphill. Um, it was a hard wicket, a bit of wind behind, a bit of a slope as well, like last week at Pauley, which meant that really we just had to put it on the stumps and, uh, and reap the rewards for it. Pretty good now, must be top wicket here and Sandy for the season, I would think. Yeah, I think, I might, I think that might take me to 18 or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't really have a target at the start of the year. Uh, oh, Sandy, just... you, and, you and Joe, top wicket taker this year? Are we? I think he's ahead of me now. Oh, is he? Cheeky bugger. Is it time for him to play in the twos or something? <laughs> <laughs> There's the league table for Div 5, just waiting for the game between Fernhurst and Wood Street to be uploaded. But other than that, you can see Frimley Phoenix well safe at the top at the moment. Which are the threes against Warbleston and Burfram. I'm here at the wreck. The pitch looks absolutely rock hard. There's a few green patches. Uh, outfield looks good. Um, not too sure how to read this one. I've never played at the wreck before. Um, certainly not on grass. But uh, yeah, it looks like a good pitch and uh, can't wait to get started. Cheers. Come on, you Phoenix. So for the highlights of this game, please check in at Henry's Highlights on our YouTube channel. Or if you want to watch the whole game, it's there as well with full commentary from Henry Dathwaite. So we won the toss and decided to bat and actually got one of the most bizarre first ballers with it looping up in the air, bouncing and rolling back on the stumps. But Rosie did well with a good 25 start, as with Jabley. All got a start and Ryan got 15 as well. And then a great cameo from Jenny at the end. And we managed to get to 106 off 32 overs. And there's the Warbleston bowling card, as you can see, some decent contributions there as well. Discussion at tea was, did we have enough? Could we bowl them out? And were we maybe a few short? Congratulations to our opposition getting 108 in 25.3 overs. They were 55 for three at one stage and it was looking good. And we managed to take five wickets, but in the end, they just had too much for us on the day. And our bowling, well, two for Danny, one for Ross, one for Mark and one for Bazza. The unlucky guys all played in wonderful spirit today and we got an extra couple of points as well, which when you think we're only about seven games old, our third team, that's a real result for us. And there's the final score, Warbleston and Burfham winning by five wickets. So mate, talk me through that then. <laughs> no, it was one of those, it's, uh, we didn't get enough runs. Ashy's wicket was key, I think to the whole thing um, he's the guy that I put in to kind of again it was very unlucky um, off the glove dropped on the ground rolled and hit the stubs um, we didn't bowl particularly well but you reckon 30 short possibly a bit more probably a okay. bit more yeah, and enough. to be honest they they bowled in the right channels and, and we didn't so fair play you know uh, got look, some points there mate got some Please points Please move on we'll move on and uh, big game next week so come on you Phoenix. And there's the Div 7 table and you can see our thirds are in 12th place which is a real fantastic effort and showing that we are worthy of this league. There's the twos moving up into third place now with that concession today and we're hot on the heels of Hazelmere and hopefully we can still get to Farnham as well. Well, it's a beautiful Saturday evening and where better to go than the R&T to discuss all the drop catches and all the wickets that shouldn't have fallen and all the ones we should have taken. Blaze had a great afternoon at the wreck playing lip hook. Here's the card for the batting and the bowling and some impressive performances all round. Good to see Skipper Claire back completing the scoring. Fingers crossed that she's back soon. There's the result. Liphook running out the winners by 63 runs. Who's that at Cow Corner? What an amazing evening we had at Frimley Green Recreation Ground. 
for the last All Stars and Dynamo sessions for summer 2024. With our youth teams also training on the evening, we were collecting donations for Mitchick Food Bank and Cafe at the Mitchick Community Centre. Also a big thank you to our councillor, Jax Olmo, who always supports the Frimley Phoenix, and he came along to show his support to what we're trying to achieve for the food bank as well. It was also the opportunity to celebrate all the All-Stars commitment and delivering some well-earned certificates handed out by our Lynn and some very proud parents there as well. Thank you for them for bringing their children week in and week out to have fun, fitness and friendship at Friendly Phoenix. Thank you so much for all your food and toiletry donations, as well as those that added a cash donation to their subs this week and other cash donations. I'm off to the food bank to deliver a car full of stuff. And once again, we prove that we are more than just a cricket club. Let's have a look at next week's fixtures. Saturday morning starts at Frimley Green Rec with our under-11s playing Odium and Greywell. And then Frencham CC fourths is where the first find themselves. And then it's the big one, the seconds versus the thirds at Hawley. Then Sunday sees are under nines at home to Stratford Sturgis, Hartley Westpool. And then on Thursday, Frimley Phoenix under-16 girls take on Yateley. So the current fantasy league table with a couple of amendments just to be made. I think there's a catch and a run out that needs to be done. But this is the scores on the doors. And Rosie's starting to pull ahead now with Dave Warren in second place. And then Matty, Adam, Tom and Alex. Then Rich, Kian, myself and Sam make the top ten. With Eugene Charles, BJ, Barry and Nimi all bringing up the chase. At the start of the season, we run a poll to see who the Phoenix favourite commentators were. And with a vast array of talent covering television and radio, spanning a number of years as well, these were the ones that we thought were our best. We have a load that are in joint fifth position with Harsha Bogle, and thank you for my tongue-in-cheek inclusion as well. I'm definitely taking that. Tough as Gilly, Danny Morrison and Skull join us. And then three characters that are sadly missed. Fiery Fred Truman, distinctive tone of Tony Cozier and the great Shane Warne. Who can believe that it's just over two years now? The commentary and wisdom of Ian Bishop, dear old Bish, coming in at number four. So if you're of a certain age, I can see why these two have got into number three. Jonas, what a man. And then Richie Benno, there's been no other like him. So at number two, it gives us this trio, which brings us more into the present day with the late Tony Gregg, the fantastic voice of Michael Holding, and then the wealth of knowledge as well by Nasser Hussein. Lastly, we had a clear winner at number one, David Bumble Lloyd. So distinctive, so funny, and certainly a Phoenix favourite. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, and a massive week next week. The twos versus the threes. That's going to be quite a historic moment. We're going to play you out with something that Jamie did when we went to the brewery tour, but we'll see you next week. God willing, come on, you Phoenix.